Welcome to the Fish North Georgia podcast, where we talk everything fishing here in North Georgia. Make a cast over that brush pot and bring wolf packs of spotted bass up. Georgia is blessed with so many of these electric only lakes. No, I didn't say that, Danny. Don't, okay, don't so, be speculating uh, now. So okay, guys, welcome to this episode of the Fish North Georgia podcast. This is a continuation of our mini cast series, and I'm here with fisheries biologist Shan O'Gorman. And Shan, the question of the day. What does a biologist fish with to target trophy bass? I am a match the hatch kind of guy. Okay. I like to I like things that mimic things perfectly. Maybe it's the scientist in me. Maybe. You know. Um, so I keep my eye out for things that are that are very natural. Mm-hmm. Um, lifelike. Ways to imitate patterns that I see in life. You know, and the way fish, the biology behind the fish, you know. Okay. Uh, and I've got a couple examples here of, of the baits that I like. Um, this new bait here, this one's great. Uh, this is by Live Target, and it's called a Flutter Spoon. And I sent you that picture. We snagged one uh, of a blueback herring about the same size. It's a, almost an exact replica of this. It looks almost exactly the same. Almost exactly. And you can actually get it with a blueback as well. This is the black back. Um, and for the, for those of you that, that, uh, are wondering what he meant by sending me the picture, you know, we're actually friends off of, <laughs> off of the air. So he was fishing a local reservoir the other day and, uh, basically while trolling or whatever it was you do, you snut, you snagged. It, yeah. We threw it in a, yeah. threw it into a, and the fish came up, yeah. you know, and we, we casted them over there and, and one of the, one of the herring got stuck on the, on the spoon. Got stuck. So he laid it across his hand and across the, he goes, what is this? You know, and then he pulled out this spoon and laid it right beside it. And, you know, maybe I'll find that picture and I'll, I'll put it. Yeah. Know, if we can overlay that, we can that overlay cool, that. I might need to right? do that just yeah, to show how, how it is, but it's almost a carbon copy. Of, it, it really is. It's, it's brilliant. That. It's so smart. Live targets are really good bait company. I use a lot of their stuff. Um, but, what I specifically like about this is the mimic of the fall. And what a lot of people don't know is kind of how sometimes how pack bass, uh, spotted bass, smallmouth bass, striped bass, they're pack feeders. They, they feed in, as a team, you know, and they hunt as a team. And what they do is if there's a school of fish and they're trying to, they're trying to feed on that fish, a lot of times, because they can't open their mouths and swim fast, they'll leave their mouths closed and they'll literally, they'll just butt the fish. They'll hit it. Okay. Okay. Headbutt it, basically. Knock it out. Stun it. Mm-hmm. And that causes the fish to fall. And they hook back around under the school and they pick the, fa- the, the, the fallers out. Right. Right. So they're just, there's fish running through hitting and there's fish underneath. And if you'll notice at Lake Lanier, especially, if you can get down... If you can get under the, the the bigger the bigger spots are going to be deeper down there. They're gonna they're gonna let the small fish do all the hitting, do all the work. Yeah, and Absolutely. they're gonna sit down under that school, and that is absolutely a beautiful vertical mimic of a falling um, herring or shad, and that's why I like that. Okay, all right, you got a couple more. That's absolutely, this one's a, a bull shad. Um, it's a buka bull shad, Mike Buka's bait, and so far this is the best swim bait i've ever fished with um the action on this thing you can see it's jointed four times three times um is incredible i've i've increased my flash here um with some bladed trebles i like the bladed trebles i don't know if any if anybody hasn't seen these before they're little blades on the bottom of the treble hooks um i love them i use them on everything um it's just different just different, something they haven't seen. A little, little extra, little extra flash, a little extra something they don't see much. And what is it about the bull shad that you like? This is so smart. Um, it's weighted here in the front, and gizzard shad are actually benthic feeders. They'll they'll feed with their head tipped down, and this will fall and stand on its nose in the water, and it very very well. It's very good mimic of a shad in the way that it swims, and also in the way that it falls. And, and when you kill it, I've done it in a swim pool. <laughs> right. Um, it's, it actually swims down. You know, it has a, it doesn't lose, when you kill it, it doesn't have, it keeps moving as it, as it falls down. And it is such a good imitation of a gizzard shad. I've only caught two fish on that, but I've got almost 14 pounds on those two fish. 
Um, so is that something fish. that you would take like the Commerce Reservoir? That is exactly fish? what I fished in Commerce Reservoir. Yeah, we touch on that in the last podcast. Right. And uh, yes, that's exactly where I caught those two fish on that. Bait. And you caught it on, 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 on a bull, Buka Bull Shad. Yeah. Buka Bull Shad. Yeah, man, that thing is money. Okay. All right. There uh, you go. And the next one, one, going since you brought up the last we talked about uh, in the last podcast, um, targeting larger bass and bass heavy impoundments, and this is an example of that. This is a uh, one sixty eight S waiver by River to Sea. Okay, uh, same guys that make Whopper Plopper, I believe. And as you can see, this is a bass imitation, right? It's a glide bait. It swims in an, in an S pattern, okay, like this. And so, if it's if you use it like an idiot bait, you just throw it out and reel it in. And it has this slow kind of an S wave to it like this, right? Now, the interesting part about that bait, though, is you can snap it. You can do about a half a quick reel and cause it to dart like a fluke. Oh, okay. And this specific bait right here, I keep in my tackle box all the time. So Because when I do go, a lot of places are bass heavy. And I'm a big fish fisherman. I don't care about catching a limit. I'm not a tournament fisherman. I, I'm, I'm there to catch weight. Okay. And... This will always be in my tackle box. Okay. About you ever it. you ever caught anything on that one? Yeah, yeah. I've caught uh, probably six fish over six on that one. On that one right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you got one looks like a brim. Nope. And that's this is the Mega Bass. Um, I think it's called the Vitalian. Uh, it's a four. This is the four, and they also make a six inch bait as well. Okay. Um, and this is the exact. This kind of goes alongside this guy um because in a bass heavy lake you're gonna have a bass heavy lake is a trophy bluegill lake and i'm i'm trying to mimic going back to what we talked about prior i'm trying to mimic the biggest meals that i can mimic and they're gonna be huge bluegill in a bass heavy lake there always are and that's why i keep this big i actually like the the the, the shape of this it's mm -hmm. very unique shaped bait as you can see um, for people on iTunes or whatever, um, it's hard to describe that. How would you describe that, Danny? Um, it's not a normal looking bait. No, it's not. Um, the joint it looks a little different too. It from is the backside. It's um, man, like I said, just check out Mega Bass and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a absolutely great bluegill imitation, and then you know, that's why it's in my box. Well, I noticed you got you know swim baits and everything, and you, what about plastic worms? What anything like that? Do you use that normally, or are you? I do. You know, um, chatter baits, spinner baits, anything like that. You took you took it out of my mouth. Right yeah, there. Okay. chatter baits, chatter man. baits. All right, <sighs> love them, okay. love them. Those things are great. And what is it about a chatter bait? I think it goes back again. We talk about the the frequency that we okay. discussed in the last podcast okay. about the vibration. So and it's more of a these right here are visual, and the chatter bait is more of a sensory. I think uh, yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna. It's such a funny bite with a chatterbait. You know what I mean? You would think that they would hammer a chatterbait because they will abs this this almost got taken out of my hand by right. a six point one pound fish. It just trucked it. <laughs> um, but my chatterbait bite is not that way. You know, it's a subtle bite. You just subtle feel bite. that. You just feel that. Vi you just feel that blade stop. It just stops. Almost like a crankbait you, you, when it goes dead. It just yep. like it just like, goes like, dead okay. on a chatterbait. You okay. know. Um, so. I don't know why. I would like to maybe maybe one day somebody can tell me why that they don't hit a chatterbait as hard as they do a, a bait like that. But I've never had a. But I catch a lot of fish on a chatterbait. Actually, I've got a rod that's dedicated to a chatterbait. Just a chatterbait that's rod. It. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, let's say somebody comes in off the street, and they say, "Shan, I want to catch a ten pound bass this year. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use art. I don't want to use live bait. Mm -hmm. I want to use artificial bait. I want to catch a ten pound bass." What would you recommend out of all the baits you talked about or anything? Just you throw this one bait all year. This what? one. Buka bull shad. Buka bull shad all day long. All day long. As long as it's a shad population in there, I would I would wear that thing out. Just it doesn't matter the, how big the lake is, just mm -mm. as long as it's got some type of shad. Mm hmm Okay. So there you go on that. Now how about a lake that doesn't have shad? Psh, bluegill. Bluegill. Yep. Okay, so so the guy going for the trophy fish with this bull shad, how would you recommend he fish it we talking fast slow or does it they've, depend yeah they've, this one this one in particular this one is a um is a fast sink okay, okay. and they have so they make they have ones. specific baits they have a floating bait they have a wake bait um they have 
this fast sink, and I think they have a slow sink as well. Um, How would you fish that fast sink right This there? one, the fast sink, I, I, I slow roll it. If, if people know what that means, you just slow, basically reel it as slow as it'll possibly go. Okay. And then every once in a while I'll pause. And again, it's weighted beautifully and it'll fall right onto its nose and, and imitate a feeding shad. And then it'll pop up. I haven't even got this thing hung up on many things. It really comes through stuff nicely. Um, so on this sink, this fast sinker, I'm, I'm bumping it. I'm hopping it. I'm maybe, maybe eight turns and then stalling it and then eight more turns. Um, I've, like I said, I've only caught two fish on it, but both fish just hit it on a slow roll. I was just, just, you know, searching. I wasn't really on specific structure or anything. And I was just reeling it very slowly. Okay. And they absolutely hammered it. Okay. And the bluegill, same, same question for the, the bluegill. Uh, we slow I rolling would, again. You're just a big I, slow roll guy. I can I, I slow roll most everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, so but you're getting down. You could you could you could also on either. This is actually this is a floating version of this. So this wakes very nicely. Okay. And I know Buka makes one that wakes very nicely as well. Um, I would for this time of year, I'm going to go deep. You know, I'm going to go with that one. And then once the springtime comes, I'll go. You know, I'll shift to my higher in the water column. But right now the fish is so deep. I'm going to fish deep. Okay. And then as the spring rolls around, I'll move my go up to my wake baits. Okay, one more question. That that bull shad's a heavy heavy bait. It is. That right there is, you're not throwing that on a Zevco 33 you from are the not. Walmart. So you are not. Well, you know, just maybe give a suggestion on, you know, the equipment set up for throwing a bull shad. Okay. One of these sinking ones. Um or it maybe what, it goes I'll just tell you what I throw mine on. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. All right. Um I have a Daiwa. And it's not an expensive rod compared to to what you can spend, you know, I think it gave about 110 bucks for it. Okay, um, it's eight foot, so um, a long rod. It's a big rod. It's um, it's a medium heavy, and medium heavy is very important when you anytime you fish with treble hooks, um, you need the flex in the rod, much like a fly rod. Um, without that flex, if you try to throw, if you try to throw a treble hook without the flex in the rod, the fish are you're going to be more apt to shake you off. You're going to get leverage against you, but if you have the a break in your rod. If you have that, you know, crankbait rod, that mm -hmm. dampening, and, and it has a lot of give to it. Has a it? little, yeah, it has that give to it, but it has a give to it in the right spot. You right. don't want the give at the tip of the rod. You want it in the middle of the rod, because it's called a moderate break. And the reason why you want moderate break is because if the fish does come at you, the rod doesn't straighten out all the way and get slack. It keeps that tension. Slowly on. bends back instead of having like a worming rod that's real heavy action that would just snap. Yes. Soon, you, know, you don't want that at all with, with, with your treble hooks. Okay. Um, so my Daiwa, it's, it's, it's specifically made for swim baits. It's a, it's the, it's like a DX something, DXHS maybe, Daiwa. But it's eight it's foot made. and it takes up to six ounce lures. Okay. Yeah, that's big. What pound test are you throwing? Are you throwing braid? I put that on 65 braid. 65 bread throw straight about 40 yards <laughs> yeah straight but straight to the thing you know, depends no on where i'm at if if i go with a uh if i'm in a clear water lake i'm going to take that down to probably 30 pound fluorocarbon and put it on a blood knot in between my braid and my fluorocarbon that way i can reel it through my guides okay um and maybe about a nine foot leader about a nine foot leader yeah so there you go so if you want to catch a 10 pound bass <laughs> this year and the lake you're fishing has shad Shan says, though, a buka. A buka. buka. A I, think buka. It's, I think it's buka, isn't it? I think so. I'm, I actually, we're going to try to get Mike on, and, and he can well, tell then us. We'll exactly, figure it out. We'll yeah. figure it out quick. So a buka bull shad, if there is shad present, yep. and if there's no shad present, a bluegill representation. And I would be willing to bet that you could probably catch fish on that shad, even though there's no shad present. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, there you go. Shan has said it. If you want a 10-pound fish this year, <laughs> Throw that bullshit. Get your folding money. That one's expensive. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. All right, guys. Appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Fish North Georgia podcast. If y'all have any topics or guests you'd like to see in the future, leave it in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell so that you'll be notified of any future videos. And don't forget to give us a follow on Facebook and Instagram at Fish North Georgia. And we look forward to seeing you soon.